So that's Matt. That's me. Uh, Matt is the Lockstep Chief Strategic Officer. I run the revenue team here at Level Set. I've been doing a, these webinars every other week. So if you've joined any of those previous ones, thank you for being a loyal fan. Uh, we get into some exciting topics like managing collections, managing lien rights for, for contractors. And this webinar came about, Matt and I were talking um, a couple months ago, actually, and we were just talking about some mutual customers and some of the challenges that these customers have and some of the, um, the cross-functional impacts that what his platform does and what the level set platform does and how there were just some interesting best practices that come about whenever you see the intersection of collections automation and efficient lien rights management. And so today, that's exactly what we're going to talk about. We are going to dig into collections effectiveness and exposing the critical issues that need to be solved with collections effectiveness. Uh, the second thing we'll, we'll go through is some collections best practices and benchmarks from some great data that Matt and his team has dug up over their lifetime of experience doing this and helping uh, large distributors, suppliers, and credit teams effectively manage the collections process. And then finally, we'll talk about why lien rights are particularly important for credit managers in the construction industry. It was funny, Matt, you were saying the other day how the um, when you think of distributors and suppliers, uh, like a, a plumbing distributor or a lumber company or, you know, fill in the blank with wh whatever distributor or supplier that happens to supply to contractors, you don't think about them in, 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 as being in the construction industry, but they are very much at the at the whims of the of the market in the construction. The whole supply chain. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So we'll dig into all that. But with that, I'm actually going to turn it over to Matt and he is going to drive and, and take us through the first two. So Matt, take it away. All right. Thanks, Martin. Um, one of the things I want to focus on is really this issue of manual collection. So it's pretty critical of, you know, especially in today's world, and I'll give a, some background on that, why AR automation is a much better way to get paid and it's much more effective. So let's go to the next slide. Really, what you'll see is the fact that the pandemic has really exposed some underlying conditions, both in credit risk management as well as collections management. Next. And that's not going to go away for a while. Um, we very much track what's going on in terms of this new normal. Um, the best, es best estimate right now is at the end of 2021 is when the U.S. as a, as a whole will go into phase four. So that means that there's still a lot of uncertainty, you know, in terms of, you know, credit risk. And there's also a lot of past due. If you go to the next slide, you'll see the fact that really in the U.S. right now, so this is um, data that comes from At Radius, a credit risk insurance company. And last June, the past due for the United States was 24%. It's now at 43%. So that just shows you, you know, how much has changed. One way to think about that, just in terms of workload, is the, the amount of AR that is, you know, effectively passed due has almost increased twofold, but the staffing is either the same or lower. So workloads are way up. If we go to the next slide. Um, and you can see that um, as you dig deeper into this, because it's not passed due by just a little bit. Um, each aging bucket has increased pretty significantly, with the over 90 uh, bucket being the largest one now. It makes up over 14%. And if you look at the payment dates, those are extending out further and further, which is ruining a lot of DSO. Go to the next slide. And that's because Outlook and Excel or, you know, Gmail and Sheets really are cash traps. Uh, when you think about how those applications work, they're not integrated into your accounting system, which means you're manually transcribing between emails and your ERP. There's no automation. It means all the follow-ups, promise tracking, dispute resolution, it's all manual. And there's no activity management. There's no visibility into what got done and who's working on what, which is then effectively slowing down your cash flow. Go to the next slide. These metrics, we've actually done benchmarks to look at, you know, what is manual AR costing. Um, when you look at how many minutes it takes to make a phone call, and that involves, you know, pre-call um, preparation, post-call admin, how many that then, therefore, how much capacity does any collector have on a given day. And what we record is less than 10% of the customers really are contacted about their invoices because everybody's waiting until it's extremely late. Again, this is a major drag on cash flow. 
So what we, what we provide, when I talk about AR automation, there's kind of three buckets of things that we do just generally. One is automated customer communication. So based on the aging of the invoices or a new customer being created, how do you create personalized communications that go right to the person so as to nudge them along to an on-time payment? The second, we provide collections activity management, a way, essentially a workflow system so that you can really think of what's the next best activity that you need to do. And the third is we provide a customer self-service portal so they can go online, they can pay you, they can access their invoices, all of that. And what we do is we benchmark before and after. Before somebody has turned on this, we know what, when we, turn, when we do our initial sync with a data system, we know what their current past due is. We know what their current uh, delinquency is. We know all of that. And then we track it six months later and we've created benchmarks as what's the impact of doing that. And we've done this over 170 times. And so we'll share with you some of the data that we found. For instance, on the next slide, we'll see that um, automated communication has a significant um, improvement. What we found is without automated communication, the average days delinquent was 39 days. With automated communications enabled, the average days delinquent dropped by 18 days. That's an over 53% improvement when you think about that as the impact on cash flow and your overall BSO. On the next slide, I'll talk a little bit about um, activity management, because really, if you think about it, accounts receivable and accounts payable for that matter, are customer facing or vendor facing relationship management roles. And so pure automation is not always enough. You really need the human touch what we found is that people who relied primarily on, you know, not using automation had the, um, the highest pass due. And that's what you see on that right-hand column. So that's showing people that primarily rely on collectors making calls. The left-hand column shows the ones that just rely on automation. So they're primarily relying on those automated communications I talked about. The middle column really shows the people who have basically a nice balance between the two. Um, and those are the ones that saw the lowest, you know, past due percentage. So a 52% improvement over mainly manual communications. We go to the next slide. This talks about um, basically online um, invoice uh, benchmarks. So this is showing the frequency of communications. And what we did is we broke it up based on invoice size and said, you know, whoever communicates the highest, what is their past due? And the people that communicate less often, what is theirs? And what you can see is in every bucket, uh, you'll see an improvement with a trend of people who communicate more often have lower past due. And so it just shows the importance of having that automated communication and getting scalability out of your uh, collections team. The final one we'll look at is really talking about um, online payments. So we track how many people provide online payments versus who don't, what percentage of adoption they have in online payments, all of that. And what you'll see here is for the people that promote online payments, their past due dropped by over eight points and their average days delinquent dropped by 14 days. Again, a very significant impact on cash flow and on DSO and ultimately liquidity, which gets us into sort of the business case, if you will, for um, you know, using collection AR automation. Every time we do, we sit down, we provide a hard ROI to our customers where we look at what is their current um, aging, what's their current past due. Then we look at their average days delinquent and we can talk about an acceleration and using the benchmarks that you just saw. And ultimately that increases working capital. So we can show how much more free cash flow comes in, cash from operations because you're avoiding interest expense and things like that. The amount of staff time you free up to go focus on higher priority um, activities. And then, of course, because this is all liquidity and goes to the bottom line, you're increasing shareholder value. We're able to demonstrate that and bring a hard ROI into each one of these um, cases. Thank you, Matt. That's definitely insightful. And I, I think there's some, I'm going to touch about, I'm going to touch on some crossover between some of the benchmarks you have and some of the things we've learned. I wanted to share this with the group. This is a survey that we put out. We do it twice a year, a spring version and a fall version. There's a link down there at the bottom. You can go to bit.ly slash pay report. What we do is it's a national construction payment report. We get, uh, we had 
I think it was six or 700 respondents on the last uh, survey. So it was definitely a, a statistically significant sample size of responses on payment practices, payment behavior, um, challenges with payment. There's all kinds of really good information. That, but I wanted to pull out a, a, just a, a couple of notes that I think are, are really important to talk about, which is that payment is slow. In construction, the average time to payment is 83 days. Right? And this includes subcontractors and general contractors. And they have wonky things like pay when paid and paid if paid. I'm sure you've heard that if you're, in, if you're a credit manager for a supplier who supplies to construction companies. But the payment is just, it's slow on construction projects. And the administrative burden is significant. Most, a significant majority, 80% say they spend a substantial time chasing payments. And this, this is making Matt's mouth water because it just it validates a lot of the research and benchmarks that they have, which is that it's time consuming to handle this stuff. It's tough. It's cumbersome. And what's most frustrating in construction is that it's a bit out of your control, especially if you're a supplier or your credit manager. You're usually one, two or three steps removed from the owner on the project, from the person who's handing out the draws. And really, that starts the, the trickle effect of the money the payment chain on the construction project. So 54% of respondents said that payment delays are caused by slow payment above them. It's not even in their control, right? And I wanna point this out because I think it's really important. This is from, as a screenshot from the report. It says contractors, subcontractors, your customers, they don't protect their payments. Ultimately, contractors are afraid to demand payment. They're afraid of their reputation risk. They're afraid of not getting the next bid on the next job. And so some claim that the lien process was complicated, about 16%, or that it's expensive, another 16%. The 56% said they were afraid to lose a customer by using their lien rights on a project. But you know, everybody knows, in construction, the best way to secure the debt for the work that you're doing is to make sure that you have secure lien rights. And unfortunately, too many companies up and down the chain from the owner all the way down to the, the, the supplier or distributor, they don't worry about the lien rights until it's entirely too late and then the deadline has passed and there's, they don't have that remedy anymore. So we're gonna teach you how to get around this. This is why getting paid is hard and slow in construction, right? The, it's cumbersome because every state has different rules. The documents are complex. The states um, have nuances. It's tough to keep track of. It's, um, it's easy to get wrong. There's a lot of logistics with it. Uh, so that's one piece of it. The second piece is that it's hard to know who's on the job, especially if you're a supplier. If you're a supplier and you're two or three, <laughs> excuse me, steps removed from the property owner, it's hard to know who that owner is or who that general contractor is, even though it's required not just to make sure that you protect your lien rights, but also to make sure that if something happens, your customer skips town or, or some dispute comes up and you're trying to resolve the, the issue, you need to know who you're working with, with. And then finally, and this is where the reputation risk comes in, which is when you have to do the firefighting, the slow payment, the non-payment, filing liens, claims, lawsuits, disputes, that stuff leads to severed relationships and bad outcomes. And nobody wants bad outcomes. Nobody jump, gets on a, a construction project and says, and I can't wait to file a lien on this project. Nobody says that. Everybody wants to avoid it, wants to do good work and have repeat customers. So how, how do you navigate this? In fact, how do, you, how do contractors prioritize who gets paid first? You got to look at the interest and what, what's the self-interest of each participant on the job. Owners want to get the job done on time and under budget because normally they're borrowing the money and time is money because they're paying interest on the loan, right? So they want to get the job done on time, under budget, and they don't want to double pay for work. The second thing, or, or GCs rather, need the job free and clear of liens and disputes so that they can deliver the job on time and under budget, right? So they're trying to avoid fires. Subcontractors, they need cash flow to finish the job. Too many subcontractors, your customers are going from job to job, sometimes using money from one job to fund another job if their balance sheet isn't big enough, which unfortunately, especially in today's economy, a lot of some contractors are working on really, really thin balance sheets right now because cash is tight, right? And that leads to a situation where suppliers are left holding the debt for too long. 
So how do you get in the top of the payment line? How do you get prioritized for payment? The first step is you need to set the right expectations. Make sure that your lien rights are protected. Goes without saying, but if you don't send your notice and it's required, you lose your lien rights. So just make sure that you're familiar with the laws in your state. Make sure you're taking the right actions to send your preliminary notice. The second thing is get the, the paperwork straight, right? Review the contractors on the job to make sure, you know, which ones are high risk and which ones are not. Uh, make sure that it's easy for your customer to get waiver, a lien waiver from you. That speeds up payment on construction projects. And then finally, track your lien deadline in the event that it, you don't get paid. You want to make sure that you're aware of that lien deadline so you don't go over it. Right? And then finally, when issues do come up, right, you want to resolve them before you have a bad outcome. So we like to say sending payment reminders. And Matt, you had a stat there that was talking about um, automated customer communication and there are there are ticklers and, and and automated things that you can set up in our system or in anytime collect that will get your the the debt request i mean the, the request for payment in front of that customer sometimes and we see it all the time we have um if you look on the right hand side this is a um, an animation of it but in our platform we can see companies communicating with each other about a debt and sometimes it's as simple as like, oh, I didn't even realize that that was still outstanding. Can you just resend the invoice? I'll pay it. There's no issue. They just, it's, it's not at the top of their list. And so they didn't know about it. So send to payment reminders, escalate issues whenever you, the, that debt is getting long in the tooth, right? So you want to avoid the lien. We recommend using a notice of intent to lien, which is a great document that it's, um, it's an escalation document. So it will definitely escalate the situation. It's a little more tension. Uh, related. However, it does lead to results because it gets the attention of the, the people on the project who need to make sure you get paid. And then finally, make sure that you're connecting across the payment chain. Sometimes uh, we, we see customers of ours even communicating with the general contractor on a job to help a subcontractor pay an outstanding debt. Because remember, on a project, they're all in it together and they want to get the job done on time and under budget. So we'll try to re resolve those issues before they come up. Making this notice and waiver process easy, you can always research lien laws for the project and state on our website. Um, so it's free, you can go and, and look up what the rules are. Make sure you put that tool in your, in your toolbox. Um, making sure the project information is right. There, are, Part of it is just making sure that you get a job information sheet at the start of the project. But if you don't get that job information sheet, you do wanna make sure you get the, the the property ownership, the legal property description, project type, all of those project participants, you want to make sure that they're right. Uh, and then you want to use technology to, to make the exchange of documents very simple for the customer. So in summary, these are the pro tips from Level Set. We've done this for thousands, tens of thousands of customers and um, for, for hundreds of thousands of construction projects with success is make sure you send a preliminary notice at the start of the project especially if it's required. There's a good argument that you should send it even if it's voluntary because it gets the attention of everybody on the job, lets them know you're there. Make sure that you're exchanging lien waivers electronically. Uh, recommend that your, sub, your customers, your subcontractors are sending their pay applications electronically. That can be a big help. Um, the third thing is send a notice of intent to lien at least 20 days prior to the lien deadline to make sure that you don't have to file the lien. And then finally, Talk it out. Whenever issues come about, talk it out with your customer um, to try to avoid the issue. But if that fails, make sure to file the lien uh, because if you don't file the lien, then you don't have the recourse for the, the debt. And that's all That's all I have. I'm going to jump to the Q&A. I put our, our email addresses here. So mjanahan at lockstephq.com, Martin at Level Set. If you're interested in either of the subjects that we talked about, um, you can reach us directly there. Um, anytimecollect.com. It's a great product. Make sure that if you're interested in learning more about how to automate your collections process or how to make that collections process more effective uh, and make your team more efficient, definitely go to Anytime Collect. And then, of course, levelset.com for anything related to lien rights and construction payment management and best practices. Somebody asked, can we get the PowerPoint? Absolutely. We will email the slide deck to everyone um, so you have all of those good stats. And you know what will be good, Matt? We should make sure in that email, um, and I'll, I'll make sure that our marketing team sends it out, but the, the link to the, um, I know y'all have a report with the benchmark report that y'all produce. 
Oh, wait, you're, you're muted, Matt. Yes, we do have a benchmark report. It's available on our website, so uh, feel free to download that. Um, Perfect. Yeah, yeah, and we'll we'll make sure we link to it in the um, we'll link to it in the in the follow up email. Any other questions from the group? Well, I'll I'll ask a question. I have a question for you, Matt. So when you look at your um, across your customer base, what's your what's the the top like um, efficiency hack or trick that you see a credit manager or collections teams implementing? I think the biggest uh, hack that people are doing right now is just moving all of their customers online. Um, we had one company, I'll, I can't give the name here, but um, they essentially had over 6,000 customers that they were um, invoicing on paper. And what they did is they set up a, a Google form um, and they collected every, they had to enter their account number and an email address. And that then got automatically populated into our system, which then started them onboarding. And they stopped emailing invoice or stopped physically mailing invoices and switched every one of those to digital. And that, that saved them over, I think it was 90 hours um, a week of invoice overhead um, and accelerated their payments. And that, that was a good, simple hack. Other people have actually been doing um, automated emails around COVID, you know, um, promotional things around, hey, if, you, if you're experiencing things, you know, do call us and give us an um, installment plan. So it's interesting just seeing, you know, different people are starting to think more like marketers, if you will, um, in the AR um, arena and thinking about they are really in a customer relationship role. Totally. I love that. And it's so true because when you think about any interaction, any customer interaction is a touch point, whether it be an invoice or a phone call about collections or a phone call about anything. Um, and so when you put that marketing lens on it and you think about the brand and, and how you're representing the customer relationship, um, it changes the language that you might use and it changes the approach. That's definitely a smart, yeah. a smart trick that, um, you know, it's a best practice for companies right now. Absolutely. What are some of the what are some of the tricks that you're seeing? <laughs> we so on the I think the so what's weird what happened in construction is you saw you saw commercial ha, commercial projects have su, has such a long gestation period that whatever was in progress unless the state shut down construction they pretty much continued like they were still bridging they're still building bridges and hospitals and you know, roads and all that stuff just kept going. But what happened was residential construction just like took off. Um, whether it was residential renovations, you've seen all the articles about Home Depot selling out of all kinds of stuff. Lumber is, a, is in a huge shortage right now across the country. Uh, but even some of the big home builders are accelerating uh, residential production. And it's because so many people are moving from urban centers because they now have the flexibility to work remote. They found that they are productive. And so the demand for suburban housing is significantly higher than it was even, you know, six to eight months ago. And so uh, there are some interesting things there. Uh, but when you think about like a, a hack in this, in this environment, you know, we, the challenge right now in construction is that everybody's on the job and they're not in the office. Right, so they, they're either on the job or they're remote, and so for a uh, for a credit team, it's tough to get in touch with the people who who owe the money, uh, and or at least tougher than it was before. And so, you know, um, one of the hacks that we're seeing is, and this is not a hack; it's just like a a best practice is that when you have a customer, make sure you have the the right contact information. Make sure you have more than just their office phone. Make sure you have a cell phone. Uh, if these are good customers, like they're going to give you their contact information. And I know that's not, that's not, uh, that's not a super um, insightful hack or anything, but it's just like a, a common sense oh, best practice. But that's one of the challenges Absolutely. people are having right now is that they're just not connecting with people because contractors are either on the job or they're at home with their, you know, working, working from home or from a home office. And so you just want to make sure you have the right contact information. And then, you know, more importantly, we're seeing aging get, the DSO, like average DSO, we track across all of our customers, average DSO is going up. And so I don't think we've seen the worst of it, unfortunately. I think that we're, we're probably in, 
you know, our guess is Q1 or Q2 of next year, um, you're going to start seeing more significant bankruptcies and, and, and real delinquent debts. Um, we, one thing that we pull is we, we look at all of the lien filings across the country. Um, we're pulling like six or 700 counties right now with all the liens that are getting filed. And so what we see is a higher frequency of bulk liens, which means that somebody's filing, you know, 70 liens on 70 different properties, but the same property owner or the same franchise and not literally Walgreens, but like think right. about that, like Walgreens locations or something like that. Um, we're seeing a higher frequency of those, which is always an indication that, okay, people are starting to drag out debts. The other thing that we do is we pull bankruptcy filings um, as it relates to construction companies. And um, you have um, you have pretty significant companies that are filing for bankrupt bankruptcy right now. So for example, um, there's on the RER, which is the, I think the rental equipment register, uh, they do a RER 100, which is the top equipment rental companies. And I think number is number 12 or 13. It's a company out of Houston uh, just filed for bankruptcy. Um, so, I, and, and we're only in August right, right. now. So I think we've, we're at the beginning of the next six to eight months of probably some really tough stuff. And so getting prepared for that, you know, we're always going to encourage people to make sure you protect your lien rights because you do yeah, submit, absolutely. Submit, submit your place as a creditor in a bankruptcy proceeding. Um, obviously not everybody's going bankrupt. Most of your customers are going to be fine. It's not doom and gloom, but those are some of the things that we're noticing. And so, yeah, best practices around that are just to make sure that you're, you're, you understand what you need to do first of all, but then of course, make sure that you're, um, you're taking the necessary actions to protect your lien rights. Totally. Cool. Well, we don't have any other questions with that. We can conclude this webinar and we can get everybody out of here two minutes early. I appreciate the time. Thank you so much, Matt, for joining us. We loved having you. And um, thank you for hosting even, us, Martin. Yeah, yeah, of course. And we'll keep an, uh, keep an eye out for an email follow up with some of the, the, like the PowerPoint and the, um, and some of the helpful links that we mentioned throughout this webinar.